Hi, everybody. It's Dr. Lori. How are you? The PhD Antiques Appraiser. I'm back. Thanks for being with me live. For those of you who are going to watch the stream later and watch the replay, I hope you enjoyed Dr. Lori's treasure hunt game. Are you ready to play? Get your friends, get your family. Let's see who's going to win tonight's game. Okay, let's get started right here, right away. Glasses. I know you all love glasses. I know you all know about glasses. I know you all want to know more about glasses. So here are some glasses for you for tonight, right? And you're going, oh, I can't see. I can't see. Yes, you can see. Hold the phone. I've heard from all of you that, in fact, the Dr. Lori cam is a game changer. That's what I've been told. And it is a game changer. So thanks to my great staff for all they do. And for the Dr. Lori cam, can you see these? These are the glasses that we're going to talk about right now. You've got to ask the questions. So what do you want to know about them? Let's see how good a thrifter you really are. Do you know what to ask? Do you know what to ask on these glasses? They are about this tall. <laughs> They're about three and a half inches tall. Oh gosh, I had a long day. I was talking to lots of fun people on video chats today and a lot of interesting items today on the video chats, but let's talk about this. So what do you think? I want you to ask those questions and I want to get that information to you and teach you a couple of things you probably didn't know that will be helpful when you're looking for those art antiques and collectibles. Remember, I'm the expert in the field. Oh yeah, I've been watching those people. I've been watching those people who have been copying me. Uh-huh. Yeah. All of a sudden they know all this stuff. I'm like, oh, that's interesting. So, you know, but you know, that happens. That happens. Video plagiarizing. You know how it is. You can call it a lot of things, but basically I want you to know that I'm going to tell you the straight story and I'm going to tell you what to look for. There are no chips. There are no cracks. No, these are not hand blown. How do you know that they're not hand blown? Usually you'll have a pontil if you see something that's hand blown where of course the rod has been taken off. So these are not hand blown. In fact, this particular piece, uh, this, these particular glasses are not hand blown. How about the decoration? What other questions have you got? What other questions have you got? Do they have a seam? These particular glasses do not have a seam. There's no seam on these glasses. What does that tell you? That they're not made in two parts, right? A seam will indicate that something's made in two parts. The seam actually shows you where how they come together. So that's why a lot of people look for seams. Don't be taken in by these folks who are trying to teach you one little basic thing like, oh, does it have a seam? So what does that really mean? What does that mean for value? So think about these kinds of things. I want you to remember that because people are going, oh, well, I heard this and I heard that. You know, Louie at the 7-Eleven taught me this or this person taught me that. Make sure you have the right source and I'm the right source. There are no bubbles in these glasses either. No bubbles in these glasses at all. Doesn't have bubbles. What does that tell you? A lot of people think that that tells you about age, right? It is not a piece of Libby glass, but you are close. You're talking about American glass, Lori, but it is not Libby glass. These particular glasses are actually made by a company called the Hazel Atlas Company. The Hazel Atlas Glass Company. Does that help? Do you know where they're from? Maybe that helps. What do you think? What do you think? Here's some more. Let's take a look again. All right. Take a look again. So no seams, no bubbles, right? Very, very thin. Let me show you the top. Look how thin that glass is. What does that tell you? So very, very thin. It's not a thick glass. Also at the bottom, the bottom of the glass is not very thick either. Some of these tumblers are kind of thick. Hang on a second. I want to hold it up for you so you can see that. Do you see that? All right, at the bottom, sometimes you'll have these glasses that at the bottom are very, very thick. This, these are not, these are not, which should help you to identify what you're going to use them for. So knowing their function is important. Remember the old saying, form follows function? That was from a guy named Louis Sullivan. He was an architect. He was actually the architect teacher of Frank Lloyd Wright. Anyway, uh, Elizabeth, hand painted or machine painted? These pieces are actually not painted at all. These are decals. <laughs> You're like, decals, Dr. Larry, my head's going to pop off, right? And notice the type of decal they actually are. They're tulips. I've taught you before, if you watch, the, if you watch actually the channel, what tulips symbolize. Different flowers have different symbolism, right? And tulips, in fact, are the symbols of prosperity. Does that help you identify their date? 
Dr. Lori, what are you talking about? Well, these are the types of things that I want you to start to put together. How old are they? They date from the 1930s, the 1940s. That's why tulips are on them, right? A time of the Great Depression. These particular glasses are, were first introduced in the Great Depression and continued to be manufactured into the 1970s. These other folks are not going to tell you this kind of information where you connect the history and the function and the use all together. Hi, Kathy. Were they poured into a mold? These particular glasses are very, very thin, very, very slight, and they have decals on top, very thin at the bottom, and they are not hand blown. They're made by the Hazel Atlas Company, the glass company out of Washington, Pennsylvania in the United States. Hmm, you thinking, you thinking, are they peanut butter cups? They are not peanut butter cups. They are used, in fact, for very expensive juices like orange juice. Orange juice is relatively expensive. They're not from the 1960s. I just told you they're from the 1930s to the 1940s or when they are introduced. And they're continually distributed and manufactured until the 1970s or so. These are the 1930s, 1940s. Can they go in the dishwasher? I wouldn't put these in the dishwasher. I have to tell you, I wouldn't put a lot of things in the dishwasher, although I had an aunt Chris who used to put everything in the dishwasher. She lived in the 98 and everything went in the dishwasher and it wasn't all that worse for wear. I've, I've seen her take things out like Royal Dalton figurines in the dishwasher. She would do that. She's very clean, but not a great idea. I would not advocate that at all, but she did it. Depression wear. It's not a depression glass, but it is from the 1930s, 1940s era. The depression, remember, depression glass can be made starting in the depression era and colored glasses made all the way into the late 1950s. Just because it says it's depression glass or is called depression glass does not mean that it's made between 1930 and 1933. So the depression. So be aware of that because you've got a lot of these titles that are being thrown around that don't relate to the historical time period or historical movement. And that's why I'm here to help you. Remember, I'm the expert PhD antiques appraiser, and I want to teach you so you succeed. I want you to understand it. I want you to know what to look for. Were they a free gift from a movie theater? These were not free gifts. They were, these were not giveaways from a movie theater. The craft company actually made them relatively famous with their particular products. They're called swanky glasses. Swanky glasses. The, the, of course, tulips and other flowers were the decals, but the tulips were very popular. They are made by the Hazel Atlas Glass Company, which is a very well-known and pretty typical made everyday household glasswares for the, in the United States, right, out of Pennsylvania in the 1930s, 1940s for this. Okay, now you know what they are. Now you have some information about what to look for, right? Thin, right, a thin body, the decals that you can actually feel. You can actually feel the decals. And if you look carefully, you can actually see the decals too. Let me make sure we've got it there. You can actually even see the decals. You can kind of see them there. Do you see that little, that little reflection as you go through? You can see that it actually is a decal. And the best way to tell a decal typically, and the easiest way to attach a decal, I'll put down the Dr. Lori cam for a minute, each way to attach the decal is so it's not right up against each other, so you have actual space throughout the decal. So that's what I mean. And when I say space, I mean a space piece like this. Let me see if I can get it for you. I mean an area where you can still see just the clear glass in between. You see that space right there in between the petals of the flower, in between, of course, the green stem and the red flower. That's how it's easier to put decals together. Okay, so now you know what they are. Swanky glasses, Hazel Atlas Glass Company, made in Washington, Pennsylvania in the United States from the 1930s to the 1940s. You're trying to guess the value of the pair. Dr. Lori's treasure hunt, would you know what's valuable in your house? Would you know what's valuable at the thrift store, antique store? And of course, um, estate sale, flea market, would you know? Would you know what to ask? Okay, Deborah thinks 35 bucks, is that too high? They're in good shape, they've got a couple of scratches, they've been used. They're used for expensive drinks like orange juice. Yeah, orange juice, expensive. <laughs> okay, what do you think, what do you think? Linda, 50 bucks. Would you pay 50 bucks for two? That's $25 each. $25 each. Would you pay that much for these glasses, which are mass produced? Deanne says $25. Are we getting closer? 
10 bucks for the pair. Carol says 10 bucks for the pair. They're kind of pretty at 10 bucks for the pair, right? $8 a piece. So that's $16. Wait, I got to do math. Eight and eight is 16. Okay, okay. Oh, not all that math. When I play this game with on the TV channels, you know, um, on the network, CBS, ABC, and others, you know, I don't do the math. I just let the host figure out the math. 12, they're hand painted. They're not hand painted. They're decals. They're decals. You can't make a new, you know, you can't make a new criteria on them or a new trait for them. They're not hand painted. I told you they're decals. 40 bucks for the two of them. That's $20 a glass. Uh, that's kind of high, guys. Kind of high. $10 for one or $8 each for the pair. Is that what Lori says? That's what Lori says. Okay. What else are you looking for? I don't know. Would you pay $10 each? Kanisha says she thinks 30 bucks for both of them. 30 bucks for both of them. Do not sell them separately. Oh, Marie doesn't want to sell them separately. Okay. So you think if you sell them as a pair, do juice glasses usually come in pairs or do juice glasses usually come in sixes or eights or twelves or right? So do you just sell one? Does somebody really want to buy one? And these are the kinds of selling tips that I want you to think about. I want you to think about what are you going to actually do? And does somebody really want to just buy one juice glass? right? Now me, I'm single. Maybe I would only want one juice glass, but typically people want more than one. So I think it you wouldn't probably do well by just selling one alone. You got to sell certain things separately, right? Like I always say, sell the beanie baby separately, you know, but pieces like this, I would sell together. Um, you probably would do that for 15 bucks. So I want you to think about quality condition and the materials that are used to make the piece. What do you think they're worth? You're saying 50 bucks for the set. 50 bucks is way too high. You're thinking ten dollars each? That's twenty bucks for the set. Are you in the ballpark? Some people are saying four. What's the value? Are you ready? Here comes the value. Yeah, it's thirty dollars for the pair. They're fifteen dollars a piece, and I think you got to sell them based on actual sales records where similar pieces have sold, sold. Not numbers of oh, it's this and no, oh, it's that. It might be this, and somebody lists it for that on eBay. They don't know what they're doing, or they do know what they're doing. Forget it. Has to be what somebody actually paid, and has to be in a recent market right? So you've got to think about that too. That was fun. How did you do? Were you close? Some of you seemed like you were pretty close, right? I saw some pretty good numbers right in that ballpark. I want you to make sure that you're doing just that, that you're in that ballpark, right? Oh, somebody got it, right? I didn't get your name. Questions too. Don't forget, we're open for the questions. If you have some questions tonight, I'll be happy to answer those too. Thanks for being with me live. It's always good to be with all of you. I spent my day, my day doing, of course, video calls and some appraisal research and some other things. It was really a lot of fun. It was a great day. Um, very, very busy here, of course, and lots of questions, good questions that you guys always have and doing some new and exciting things on our community tab. I hope you're going to that community tab and subscribing so you can get to the community tab. And of course, participating with the rest of my great community here. The community tab is easy to find. You have to be a subscriber on YouTube. And then of course you can go to the community tab. There are big surprises on the community tab. So I want you to check it, make sure that you check it out. And I want you to check it out because those surprises are not for me. Those surprises are for you. So I want you to make sure that you go there and you check out the community tab as well. A um, couple of other things that I've been I've been thinking about this week is, of course, telling you more about how you identify glass, how you identify jewelry. The next couple of weeks, you know, it's going to be all about things like perfume, jewelry. Did you see the new video on all the perfume bottle values? Wow, that's getting a lot, a lot of play. A lot of people are enjoying that because it's information that people don't know of how you can actually identify the perfume bottle that's in front of you, not only the perfume bottle that's on the video. And that's what's different about me and everybody else because I'm gonna tell you what you look for at the pieces that you're actually looking for, not just pieces that are on a table, for example. So, well, we'll focus on that kind of information, but I'm trying to educate your eyeballs and make you think about what this piece is. How was it made? Where was it made? What are the characteristics? So yeah, thanks, B. I'm glad you loved the perfume bottle video. If you loved it so much, did you share it? I hope you shared it. Please share it with your friends and family. Please share it on your other channel so everybody can learn from it. It's really a wonderful um, example. But the other thing that's coming up, and you know, I don't have a Valentine personally, and that's okay, but you know the other thing that's coming up is in fact 
Valentine's Day and the idea about jewelry. So there's going to be a lot of jewelry, in fact, coming up. Mary, thank you so much for the super sticker. Actually, I've been talking to a lot of you, and it was cool to talk with a lot of you um, on video calls and other ways. But don't forget about um, the way in which you can get in touch with me right here, uh, live, of course, Thursday and also Saturday nights. And on Sundays, I premiere, of course, the new the new video. So you could always be there too. So I'm wearing a lot of shirts because I've been very cold. And anyway, so I'm going to pull up, put these up a little bit. But jewelry is going to be way, way, way important. It's kind of important in my life all the time because I just love any kind of thing that sparkles. So um, a lot of that's going to be coming up with what you should look for with that as well. And I know a lot of you have been looking for that. But glass is really going to be a, a hot topic. And that's why I wanted to start off with these because these are something that you can find. And not only in the tulip pattern, but also you can find them in patterns like snowflakes. You can find them in patterns in other flowers. You can find them in all different types of things. But I want you to become a good looker, right? I know you're all good looking, but I want to make sure that you find a good looker, right? I want you to look at these pieces and know what quality is and leave the junk behind, right? So don't miss those things when you're at the thrift store. You know, even if you're um, even if you're going around in a thrift store, you know, how whatever you're looking for, I want you to be able to do that, okay? So don't forget to share the channel and don't forget the community tab. Now, a couple of other things that I want to talk with you about. If you haven't got, a lot of you said, actually, I talked with someone on a video call today and she said, well, Dr. Lori, I can't really see um, that mark, that mark on the back of my sterling silver flatware said, I'm guessing it says sterling. I'm just going to guess. And I said, don't guess. She said, that's right. I don't have to guess anymore because I got the loop. <laughs> And she was so happy because she was able to see what she needed to see to identify her piece. So the loop is very helpful. The other pieces are helpful on, of course, my shopping channel. Now, on my shopping page, you can go to drlorivcom shopping. And why am I mentioning this? Because a lot of you have said that you can't find actually the shopping, that you can't find the loop, that you can't click on it. Please, please, please check your settings. The channel works. The video works. The links work, everything works. And I know it's frustrating, but check your settings, you know? And, and I don't mean check your settings so you don't lose, you know, something in your stone, a stone in your ring. I'm talking about check the settings on your computer and your devices and such. Dallas Star, thank you very much for the super stickers. Thank you all for the super stickers and for the super chats. I am very grateful for all of them in any denomination. Any amount is helpful. I'm glad you love the loop. I'm glad you ordered the loop. Um, it will help you, and that's why I'm here to help you. But thank you for supporting the channel. And Loretta, thank you for supporting the channel. And the reason for it is, of course, to support, of course, making new videos so I can make new videos for all of you. And so we can do things like the Dr. Lori cam. When all of you said, I can't see it, Dr. Lori, I need to see it. Guess what? We got the Dr. Lori cam for you so you can really see it. So when I say, oh, I want you to look at the bottom, so when you actually look at the bottom, you can really see it. And that's what I want. I want you to see nuances. I want you to learn it. And you're going to learn it by educating your eyeballs. And I'm the only one who can teach you that because all these other people are like you guys, right? Starting out, you're looking at pieces, you're trying to learn stuff. I've already done all that work. So utilize the work I've done. I'm giving it to you all for FREE. -E. That's what we like. Okay, let's do another one. You want to play another one? All right, you ready? All right, here we go. Get ready. Dr. Lori's treasure hunt. Let's see if you can identify and what questions you would have about this object. So I'm going to move these lovely glasses so you can all see it. I'm going to move them over here next to the Inuit sculpture. I'm going to move this little dolly too. I'm going to put this here. Put this here. One, two, three, four. Okay. Now, first thing you should be thinking about this set. What questions do you have? What questions do you have? about that set right here. Hi, Betty. <laughs> Thank you so much. I will talk about old talcum products. I did in the video as well. And uh, I'm glad you love the new Dr. Lori Cam. So a couple of things. So talcum products, uh, the ideas of like old talcum powder that's in its original jars. Remember, oftentimes the talcum should be in a dark colored glass jar. Um, or glass bottle. And the color, of course, is to keep the light out so ke a chemical reaction doesn't take place and so you don't ruin the actual talcum powder or other types of powders. So usually it's a cobalt blue glass or a brown or amber kind of glass. So look for that as you do that. I want you to make sure of that. Kim, thank you very, very much. And the reason why I want to make you aware of these colors and what it should look like is so you know if you're getting the real thing or if you're getting a fake or a knockoff. 
And that's why I want to do that. Kim, thank you very much. And thank you all for the super chats and the super stickers. It really does help. And you're helping the whole community, which I love. Is it hand painted? These particular pieces are in fact hand painted. So what is it? Do you know what it is? Is it stamped or signed? Okay, we'll let the Dr. Lori Cam answer that one. Is it stamped or signed? Well, let's see where we are. Doesn't look stamped, doesn't look signed. Now what do you do? Here's what you do. Do you see right here along this edge how it is not glazed? The edge is not glazed, but the interior is glazed and this is not glazed. That tells you something. People are gonna go, oh my God. Now we're looking at something that looks the same, but she's gonna tell me it's different. It's different. It's definitely different. And it's different on all of these, right? All of these are actually in that same manner. So when it's actually being made, it has to sit on something, right? And here's the Dr. Lori Kim. Ah, oh, my staff is so cool. <laughs> here's the Dr. Lori Kim. The interior here of the bottom is actually glazed, but that circle around the end isn't. And then I want you to look at this. Do you see those ridges? What do those ridges mean? I've taught you that. What do those ridges mean on these pieces? What do those ridges mean? There's a lot going on with this set. This is a sake set. Of course, you see, of course, the characters, which usually mean wine or they say good health, those kinds of things. On sake sets, all of them, including this one. Condition, is it milk glass? It is actually not glass at all. This is bone china. Bone china, not glass at all, okay? It's not glass, this is glass. Bone china. So it's a sake set, doesn't have a stopper with it. Is it handmade? If you see these ridges, you would know that these particular pieces are actually hand built, okay? That's why I was pointing out the ridges and whoever that was who said handmade, I'm sorry I missed your name, but that person understood it. Sandra, hand, so hand built. Hand built is different than handmade, okay? They're hand built and then they actually are put into a kiln, which of course is a machine. So, okay, all right, good, good, good. And then what you're looking at here are in fact, these particular pieces also have that blue white pottery, which goes back to the, the tradition of the Cantonese, Chinese, right? Or the great port of Canton, right? Canton ware is always of course, blue and white. Yes, it's pottery, so now you know what it is. It's bone china, it's ceramic. Remember, ceramic is that umbrella term. It's got the blue white area, it's also, how old is it? How old do you think it is? So it dates to the 1970s, date to the 1970s, and notice how many pieces, how many pieces dates to the 1970s, right? So it's, it's, it's old, but it's not as old as the 1950s or earlier, right? It's not turn of the century, Asian, okay? And then the other thing that we're looking at here is the ridges that I told you about. One, two, three, four. Why am I counting? Remember the count? I used to love the count on Sesame Street when I was a little kid because my mom, as I've told you many, many times, was much older than all my friends' moms. So she was just like tired most of the time. And, you know, but she was lovely and wonderful. And I loved her very much and I miss her all the time. But it would be funny because she'd be like, let's count with the count. I was little and she had a million things to do and other kids and all of this. And I liked the count very much. One, two, three, four. And the count would count. Why do I keep counting four sake cups? Why do I keep counting them? Because sake cups, sake sets usually come with five cups. Thank you, Joanne. Sake cups usually sets usually come with five cups. Okay. It is for the Western market that they will start to make six cups typically. And this particular set only has four cups. It did have a fifth one. Made in America since it's not marked with its country of origin. Okay. That's a good tip since it's not marked with its country of origin. These pieces are made in the 70s. Could they have had a sticker on them that now has been lost? Yes, they could have had a sticker on them that now has been lost, so it's not marked on the bottom. Oh no, Dr. Lori, uh, I've gotta think of all these things. That's why I'm trying to make it easier for you. I'm trying to have you look for things just in case you don't have the stipper, just in case you don't have all the information. That's why I want you to learn it from the ground up. I want you to lay the foundation and learn it this way because once you learn that, then it's yours. 
Nobody's going to fool you. Nobody's going to tell you it's something that it's not. You're going to be able to trust your gut. And that's what I want you to do. That's why I'm doing all this. So you get it. So you get it. Anyway, so that's one of the things that we're going to look at at this. So usually they have five. This one only has four. What's that going to do to value? You know, start doing the value in your head. It's in beautiful condition. They're in beautiful condition. I like the little element here, the little spout. It's very, very thin. It's almost just like a little beak of a bird. It's almost just like a little tiny itsy bitsy element right here, a little beak. I'll try to do my cam since I have my cam, right? <laughs> so I'll show you that. There it is. Now, a lot of people will look straight down in the piece to see whether or not it's hand built. Is it hand built or are only the actual cups hand built? This is the the sake, quote, decanter, right? What would pour the sake out of. It too has the ridges at the bottom, just like the cups, right? Okay, I hope that helps. I'm very happy when you told us all, when you got back to us after that the first week with the Dr. Lori Cam that it's a game changer. So thank you for that because we worked hard on it. And you supported us to, in fact, you supported us with the super chats and the super stickers. So thank you for those because that's how we got the Dr. Lori cam to help you. So, you know, we're putting it all back in for you guys. So thank you very much for doing that. You know, it's not so, you know, I can get my hair dyed, which I haven't gotten dyed in a long time anyway. So, you know, <laughs> all right, let's see. So what other questions do you want to ask about it? We know it's 1970s. We know it's sake. We know it's hand built. We know we're missing a cup, right? We know it's in beautiful condition. We know it's based on Canton ware or blue white porcelain china that is actually the type of china designs and decorations that inspires everything from Delft to Royal Copenhagen to all to Meissen to all of the blue white ceramic that you will see actually starts from there okay that's what we're looking at here that's what we're looking at here right really nice nice quality nice style you'll notice that of course these elements are well Done, and you probably have seen others of these sets. This is not a one of the a kind set either. Is it missing a stopper? This particular set um, did not have a stopper to go with it. Typically, what it would have used is not a traditional stopper, but in fact, a cork stopper. Some of the traditional sets will have a cork stopper instead. Very, very big. It would have been a big cork stopper as opposed to something that would match in terms of material. So, what do you think? What do you think it's worth? Now you know what it is. You know it's a sake set. You know it's bone china. You know it's from the 1970s. You know that there should have been five cups, but there's only four. You know it's hand built. You know it's 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 fired in a kiln, and this is for the whole set. I want you to think about the whole set. Mary thinks 150 bucks for the whole set, but it's missing one. I think 150 is too high, guys. Nate is too low at 20. Keep up the good work, and Dr. Lori Cannon is a game changer. Thank you, Lynn. Thank you very much for your, for your support of the channel as well. I appreciate that. There's lots of ways you can support the channel, not only with Super Chats and Super Stickers, but also, of course, if you buy some of the merchandise, and that would be, you know, the Dr. Lori Says, the mug. And I know lots of you have the mugs because I've seen them, and we featured you with the mug. And, of course, the T-shirts, too, which come in a lot of colors. So Harmony Says 65 for the set. Right, Harmony Vintage says 65. How good a thrifter are you? What do you know the questions to ask? Liz, $100 for the set. Is that too high for it missing one cup? Sprite says 4250. Well, you know, that's the difference. That's a $10 difference, which is a lot, right? So is it 40 or is it 50? Which is it? You know, you got to guess, right? Right? Let's see. What do we think? 50 50 50 45. Love my t-shirt. Got it last week. Are you wearing it? Where are you wearing the t-shirts? That's what I want to know. Where are you wearing it? Are you wearing it out? Are you wearing it when you're thrifting? Are you wearing it around the pool? Are you wearing it? Are you giving them as gifts? There's a good Valentine's gift, right? If you can't afford the jewelry, get a t-shirt. <laughs> Get red, right? Yeah, I know. Your wife or your husband will say, oh, well, at least I got a red t-shirt. You know, that's coming up. All right. What else? 40 for the five-piece set. All right. 40 for the five-piece set. It's very nicely made. It's in beautiful condition, right? It's 50 years old and it's in this condition. Does that have an impact? Okay. Paige said $20 auction value. Let's talk about different values. There's insurance value, which is replacement value, which is the highest of the values. There's retail value, which is what I'm looking for. I'm looking for retail value of the set where a similar piece has sold. Auction value is way down here. 
auction value is always going to be very low. And it can be so low that it's even lower than wholesale. It's usually about wholesale value or 50% of the value of retail, right? So if something's worth $100 retail at auction, you should be able to get it for 50. But sometimes the auctions just let stuff go for even more. Today, I appraised old Paris um, ceramics that went at an auction for $1 and were worth 850. So sometimes they're way, way off, right? Between retail and wholesale or auction value. So $20 for auction value, but we're looking for retail value for the set, which is missing a cup, right? Right? What other ones do you think? What other ones do you think? 29 bucks. how did you arrive at 29 bucks, right? No round numbers here. We're getting right down to the nitty gritty, right? Right down to the nitty gritty. 25 for the set. William, you're cheap at 25 for the set. Dr. Lori called me cheap. Oh, Nicolette, be scheduling a video cap. You love my work and personality. It'd be a joy to speak with you. It'd be a joy to speak with you too, all of you. It's always a joy. It's my joy to know all of you and to have you as part of the community. Thank you for the super chat. I appreciate it very much. Um, all of you, I know everybody, I speak for everybody that appreciates it when someone, of course, supports the channel because we're supporting each other. So thank you for that. I appreciate it. Yeah, do a video call if you can. They're very easy to schedule and, you know, it works out very well. People love it. You know, um, I had a wonderful, amazing example uh, on a video chat uh, recently it, in the same chat, in the same 10 minute chat. It was a Dolly, a Picasso, a Chagall. Oh, my. <laughs> it was really something. So those were that was a pretty amazing video chat. That was a quick 10 minutes. Let me tell you, that was that was really worth it. Anyway, so other things. Don't forget about the community tab. As I said, lots of things on the community tab. And have you been binge watching? A lot of you say you've been using the binge link and that it's been helping. It's right in the description on YouTube, right in the channel's description is where you can find the binge link. So you can just binge, of course, the channel videos and you can get all the information. A lot of you have told me that you benefit from watching them more than once the same video. You're getting information. So you're focusing on one part of information, then I talk about something else and you can focus on that. So however you do it, however it works for you, the binge link works well. Okay, what do you say? What do you think? Values, wanna guess the value now? You know what it is. You know it's a sake set, Bone China, 1970, right? And let's see those numbers. You, you said, you think it's this, somebody thought it was $150, somebody thought it was as low as 20 bucks, right? Uh, thank you, Trisha. Thank you very much for your super sticker. I appreciate that. Nice of you to help us out. Marcia, Marcy, Mar I'm sorry, Marsha Marie, Marsha Marie, <laughs> right? Thinks that, Grace thinks, thinks 50. And I'm going to tell you that this particular piece worth $75 for the set. Now, here's what's interesting. I went to make sure that I would see the actual sales records and somebody was able to buy this for $10. Why? Because the person who listed it didn't know what it was, had no complete description of the piece and just thought, oh, 10 bucks, I'd be happy to get rid of it at 10 bucks. And that particular piece was worth a lot more. So they made a big mistake. The person, of course, who bought it probably knew what they were doing and realized they were getting a bargain. So look for those bargains. They're out there from people who really are not watching in my channel, basically. So that's what you're looking for. But based on an actual sales record where a similar piece had sold, 75 bucks for this. Got it. Mary got it. Woohoo. Mary got it. And I got to talk to Mary today. So that was a lot of fun. Thank you, Mary and the other Mary too. Wow. Were you way low? Yeah. You got to be careful. You don't want to lose 50 bucks on this because you think, well, I would only pay this much. You've got to analyze the market. And that's why I'm trying to teach you how to analyze the market. So you have to look at where these pieces are now, right? What's happening in the market now with these types of pieces? Bar, I've been telling you, telling you, telling you, barware is big. It's hot. It's all the rage now. And not just mid-century modern barware, but all kinds of bar, not just Libby or Mosier barware from America, but anything that has to do with, of course, socializing barware. Why? Well, we're in a situation now where to be able to socialize is something that we really can't do as much. So you want to think about that. And when I think about socializing, I think about traveling. I think about gr wonderful places where we can go and wonderful places where I've been. And I think about all the wonderful people that I've been with and where I shared a glass of wine or maybe some sake, right? And one of the places is 
oftentimes that idea of travel goes hand in hand with shopping. So don't forget that I want to teach you also what to look for. And one of the places that I love to be, and I love to be souvenir shopping, is Italy. Italy, of course, right now is on the rise with respect to its souvenir shopping and also, of course, with its travel and tourism. So you're going to see a lot about Italy um, in your everyday area. So this is one of my favorite places. And you know why? Well, because this, of course, is the Arno. And this is very close to the Uffizi Gallery in Florence, Italy. And this is also the area where you have all the jewelry shops. That's where all the goldsmiths are. And all, of course, the jewelry shops are. And I remember my one of my first trips to Italy. I was quite young and I bought the biggest, roundest gold hoop earrings I could get. <laughs> all I needed was like, you know, a big pot of tomato sauce and I could have stayed there. But the biggest earrings, they're gorgeous. I still have them. I love them. <laughs> And in fact, it was really to remember that particular um, trip to Italy. But when you're souvenir shopping, you've got to think about some of the things that are indicative of a country. And one of the things is, of course, a beloved character of the country, and that's Pinocchio. Pinocchio, of course, you know the story probably from Walt Disney, who made it famous in the 1940s when it debuted as a full-length animated feature. Pinocchio, if he would lie, his nose would, of course, grow. My favorite was Jiminy Cricket for a long time. But then, you know, Kermit the Frog bypassed him. I love Kermit the Frog very much. Anyway, when you're looking for souvenir pieces, I want you to think about the characters that are reflective of a place, okay? I want you to think also about um, those pieces that are handmade by the artisans of that place. And I want you to think about how you'll remember that place. I've purchased a lot of souvenir stuff and shopping tips from these places. And I oftentimes do a little bit of research beforehand to identify what I want to bring home. And then I try to shop around for, of course, the best bargain. And you're gonna all say it with me, always, what do I always say? Always negotiate, be polite, use cash, whatever the currency is in that country, use that and go from there. Janice says, that's where my husband bought the 40th anniversary ring two years ago. Janice, right, and you'll never forget it. So you can recognize that over the Arno River, of course, that beautiful site, and that's exactly where all, of course, of the jewelers row, if you will. Um, you know, there's a jewelers row in New York City, a jewelers row, of course, Rodeo Drive, California, jewelers row, uh, Pennsylvania, Sam, uh, Philadelphia, Samson Street. Negotiate, negotiate, but, you know, be polite. It's always a good idea to download the translation apps so you can actually, if you can't speak the language, so you can actually use those apps on your phone to negotiate politely in a foreign language. So that's one of the other tips that you always want to remember when you're doing that. Having those apps on your phone ready to go is a good idea. So are Vatican souvenirs valuable? I've told you the story about when I was buying rosary beads and the nuns at the Vatican yelled at me. I told you about that in another video. But basically, yes, Vatican souvenirs can be valuable. You just want to make sure that you're not getting the pieces that are these mass reproductions in large, large, large numbers that obviously were not made in Italy or in Vatican City. You want to get those pieces that are indicative only of Vatican City. So it's a good idea to think about that. Um, oftentimes, the things that relate to the great collections of the Vatican museums is important. And um, I always tell people while you're in your phones and in your cameras and your smartphones and you're looking and you're trying to take a lot of pictures, I oftentimes have said for many, many years when I have been invited by the travel industry to lecture all over the world, I've told people to use your brain and to use your eyes and your mind as a camera. Stand there, get rid of the camera, get, take the camera away from your face and just look and take it in and remember. The picture in your head is just as good, if not better, than the one that you have digitally on your phone. So yeah, jewelry while traveling is really great. Nick, thank you so much for your super chat. I appreciate your support all the time and I appreciate your comments. I'm glad to hear that you love the Dr. Lori Cam and that you love Dr. Lori's treasure hunt game, right? So we love the game, it's a lot of fun and we're gonna play a lot. I have some other pieces here on the table. A couple of things that um, recall, of course, the same time period, the 1970s. Uh, my compliments to the community. I love the new cameras. Thank you, Helen. And thank you for your support, too. I appreciate the super sticker and the super chat. Um, and I also appreciate the fact that you're using the tools that I'm giving you. You know, Dr. Lori's treasure hunt kit on the shopping 
um, link is really helping the loop and the diamond tester and the something as simple as a measuring tape. You know, I've been teaching you guys to try to utilize your arm as a measuring tape, just in case you forget yours, you know, try to do that, but also try to have some of these things on your person for when you go shopping and hunting, because you're on the hunt for the bargains. But a lot of things that I want you to take a look at and I want you to see, don't forget. And then a lot of you have asked me, hi, Lori, thank you so much for always supporting the channel. I appreciate that very much. I wanted to um, show you a couple of pieces because a lot of you, we've been talking about my nails. So I changed from the red. A lot of you are going to go, oh my gosh, Dr. Lori. Oh, where am I? <laughs> Let's see. I'm close somewhere. I'm somewhere. Here we go. So I had to change. I couldn't get all the red nail polish off, but I'm, I had to kind of change into the light. I don't know if you like the light better, but a lot of you were on, of course, my page is saying, keep the red, keep the red, keep the red. So I'm going to go back to the red because I thought it was kind of cool. It was very bold for me. It was like a big deal for me. Anyway, but the other things that I want you to look for is I want you to look for, speaking of red, is I want you to look for some red jewelry. And I want you to think about bargains. I like you to talk. I like to talk a little bit about bargains when it comes to jewelry. And these, these particular pieces are an example. So... This example that I've got here is a three stone ring. Do you know the stone? Can you tell the stone just like that? This is what I want you to see. Can you tell the stone just like that? It's set in 14 karat gold. Always look for those, see those slits, those openings at the bottom? I want you to look at the bottom and I want you to be able to make sure that you have, in fact, I don't know if you can see it. Let me get my big gloves out of the way. Hold on, hold on. I want you to make sure that you see that there is, of course, light coming through so that the setting has the light coming through. See those circles? I want you to be able to see all of that. But I want you also to be able to look at a stone and try to identify that particular stone. Not always that easy to do, but I think the more that you look at it, and I'm gonna start with red stones because they're the easiest, but the more you look at it, the better off you're going to be. Let's try this one more time. Bear with me, I'm learning too. See it? Okay. So. And I'm going to make it a 50, I'm going to make it a true or false. Is it a, well, I'm not going to make it true or false. I'm going to make it a 50-50. Is it a ruby? Is it a garnet? Are they rubies? Are they garnets? And this is what I want you to think about. Texas Gal is a super sticker. Thank you so much, Texas Gal. Thank you very much. I know a lot of you are having your own channel. I know a lot of you are learning the information here and, of course, having it help with, of course, your channels. So I'm glad that this is helping you. Is it a rotolite garnet? Is it a garnet? Is it a garnet? Why did you think it was a garnet? I want you to think about those things. It was faceted, right? All those car, all those actual cuts on the table, right? On the top of it there. And then you'll notice that a lot of light is coming through. So you think they're garnished. You don't think it's a ruby. Why? Because a ruby is in fact, not as dark not as maroon, right? It's the wrong red for a ruby. That's right, Michael. It's not the right red for a ruby. And Michael is one of my priority um, visitors too. A lot of my priority members are learning a lot and know a lot. So I'm helping to get the market analysis for a lot of them. And for some of them, they don't know anything about their object. They just picked it up and I identify the whole thing for them and tell them a value too. So don't forget about those types of things if that's a service that you can use. I wanted to show you the garnets because the garnets are something that are beautiful and they're a statement kind of stone and they're a stone that are in fact very popular as red stones are. A lot of people can't tell the difference. I'm glad that most of you can. So remember all of that too. So it's a lot of fun to, to be playing Dr. Lori's treasure hunt and also to talk a little bit about travel as well. Rachel, thank you for the super sticker. I appreciate that. You're supporting the channel and the community. And that's what I love. I love to build the community. I built them in classrooms and universities all over the United States. I'm glad it's been fun so far, Michael. It's been fun to be helping you as well and your family to identify those family heirlooms and yard sale and flea market and estate sale finds. I've been building community in classrooms for a long time, and I'm building it here in this one too. And you're all helping. You're a great community to have. Okay, Dr. Lori's treasure hunt. One more object, right? Let's see this one. What do we think? I need a manicure and oil your cuticles. Okay, Janet, how do I oil my cuticles? What do I do? I use oil. <laughs> I put a lot of cream on my hands because my hands are very, very um, dry, um, but I don't know about oiling my cuticles. So in the comments somewhere, tell me what to do. I'll listen to you. <laughs> I need all the help I can get. So anyway, so this particular piece, what did you mean by cut in the garnet, please? What did I mean by cut in the garnet? Wait a minute, before I do another one of the treasure hunt game, I'll show you what I mean by cut in the garnet. You see these slits? Hang on, hang on, hang on. 
Okay. You see those slits at the bottom in the gold? All right. That's what I mean there. And then cuts, if you'll notice, these particular stones have a facet that's called faceted cut. That's all of those little elements that create the refraction and reflection in the stone from the light. So that's what I mean. And they're cut in different ways. They could be a princess cut. They could be a marquee cut. They can be all different kinds of cuts. But my point to you was let's identify color because color is the easiest thing to start with. And we're going to build on this knowledge. That's what we're going to do. You're going to be dangerous. And that's what I want. I want you to feel it in your gut. I want you to know what's valuable and we'll know what's junk. Don't even time for a bad <laughs> a manicure. No, no, no. I mean, you know, I, I'm not even going to talk about how my hair is sort of a brunette still. I'm not even going to talk about it. And yes, I will do whatever I'm supposed to do to oil my, man, my, my hands. But if you had any idea how much time I'm taking to do all of this, which I love to do and I'm happy to do it for you, manicure is kind of far down on the list. Anyway, so you can purchase the white gloves on our shopping at drlaurieV.com. There are white gloves. It will actually be under, of course, storage. Uh, you have to open up those accordions. It'll say a little plus sign, click it open. So they all open up so you can actually look through and then click on the picture of it. And if you don't see a picture or if you see a link that you think is broken, check your settings, please. All of those particular shopping links work. I know they work. We've tried them uh, a lot. Anyway, getting back to my point, which was the doll. So let's talk about this one. I know a lot of you love dolls. I know a lot of you see dolls and I want to do this one for another of the Dr. Lori's treasure hunt games. So what do you think? What do you think? I'm going to start with the doll. In a second, I'm going to show it to you close up. I want you to see she's about eight inches. See, there's a kind of a long skirt, kind of a long kind of really like a christening gown so long on her. I want to show you her face so you can start asking those questions. She is unmarked. She is unmarked. She is unmarked. There's no mark on her body. There's no mark on her buttocks. There's no mark on the back of her neck. There's no mark on her at all. Can you see the face? Can you notice the face? That's all the hair she has. She has a little bit of hair in the back, but that's it. And then I'm going to show you. Da -na 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 -na. <laughs> Here, I'm going to show you the feet and the legs so you get a sense of the feet and the legs. Oh, gosh. Hold on. Hold on, people. <laughs> I got to put up this dress so you can see her body. And what I want you to see and notice is, in fact, her legs. Okay, so you can see her feet, same material as the head. Okay, all right, there she is. What do you think? She's cute. <laughs> what do you think? Original clothing, yes. Actually, original clothing. Jointed, yes. She's jointed. Very good question. Smart. Like teddy bears. You want to think about teddy bears. Are they jointed or not? That usually increase in impacts quality. It indicates quality. Okay. What else? Her mouth is closed. Oh, no. Dis so you're not seeing teeth, right? That might help you to date the piece. That might help you date larger dolls. Larger dolls, if you see the teeth, that usually indicates that the doll is made at some point after the, in the, into the 1920s. What's her hair made of? Her hair is synthetic. It's not like mine. It's not a natural, real hair wig. She is ceramic. She is ceramic. You want to look for ceramic. Is the body cloth or leather? The body is exactly what I showed you the body to be. The body is the same as the face. So ceramic, which is the only ID I'm going to give you. Eyes look to be painted, don't they? They look to be painted. You're learning a lot, aren't you? How's she put together? Well, she's jointed. So inside, she's actually put together and she moves like a joint would move. All right? I want to thank you for subscribing. I want to remind you to share. She does have hands. They're the same like the feet. Hands are the same like the feet. All right? Look the same. And where can you find all the information about her, including the value? On the community tab. Check out the community tab. There's big surprises there. Go get the answers there. I'm Dr. Lori. Thanks for being with me live. This is Dr. Lori's Treasure Hunt Game, and I'll see you next time.